all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave parapeeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is the Paranormal Ministry. I'm your host, Sean Whittington. I'm a seminarian in the United States Old Catholic Church, and I'm coming to you live from my haunted house, my very haunted house, where I live. Been quiet today. Might not stay that way with the guest I have lined up. When you get someone like her and I together, you never know. I'm so happy she's here. And I know that's why you all tuned in. She's back by extreme popular demand. And uh, she's in the green room and I will bring her right out. Let's first check the prayer urn. Elizabeth H. from California, feeling hopeless since COVID and the pandemic, aren't we all? And I'm so sorry to hear that, Elizabeth. With the current situation in the nation, I'm moving my whole family to Texas over the next few weeks. Wow, that's, that's big time. Can you pray for a fresh start and a Merry Christmas for us? That request is going to make me cry, Elizabeth. Absolutely, I will pray for you, and I will pull out a prayer for the family. How's that? And yes, you um, you will have a safe trip, and you will have a fresh start. And you and your family, that's the most important thing. Remember, family, family, family. Don't let that, don't let nothing break that apart. You guys are stronger together. Okay. I offer this prayer up to Elizabeth and her family for a safe trip and a Merry Christmas and for the Holy Spirit to enter and intervene there in their lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, from you, every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. Father, you are love and life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, born of woman, and through the Holy Spirit, fountain of divine charity, grant that every family on earth may become for each successive generation a true shrine of life and love. Grant that your grace may guide the thoughts and actions of husbands and wives for the good of their families and of all the families in the world. Grant that the young may find in the family solid support for their human dignity and for their growth in truth and love. Grant that love, strengthened by the sacrament of marriage, may prove mightier than all the weaknesses and trials through which our families sometimes pass. Through the intercession of the Holy Family of Nazareth, grant that the church may fruitfully carry out her worldwide mission in and through the family. Through Christ our Lord, who is the way, the truth, and the life forever and ever. Amen. Elizabeth, I'm going to ask that you please keep in touch with me and send me messages and let me know how your move went, how your uh, fresh start is going, how everybody in the family's taking to it, and let me know how your Christmas is going and all that good stuff. I mean, you have a the merriest of Christmases and a wonderfully happy new year, okay? All right, let's check the Paranormal Ministry mailbag. Christopher C. from Tennessee. Tennessee, Bell Witch Country. And the Tennessee Volunteers College team is doing fantastic this year. Good for you. They say opposites attract. <laughs> Where's this going, Christopher? They do. I am a diehard paranormal investigator, and my new girlfriend, I believe my soulmate, hates that I do that. (laughs) Advice? (laughs) Question mark, question mark, question mark. Oh, Christopher. Opposites do attract, but it's kind of cool if soulmates have some of the same interests. Um, I really don't know how to advise you with that, brother. You're you're pretty much on your own. 
you know, that's a great question. I might even ask my guests that today. This is the advice I will give you, though. If she's truly your soulmate, it will end up being okay. Just back off on it a little bit. Don't come. It probably freaks her out. Don't come home and talk about the ghost hunt. Don't come home and tell ghost stories. Don't try and drag her into it. And also back off on it a little bit. Don't be so gung-ho, 24-7 ghostbuster, because you're not single anymore. You're now with your soulmate, and you've got to take that in, into consideration. But if it really does become an issue, maybe there's a reason why it's becoming an issue. And if you are truly falling in love and she is your soulmate, maybe you want to rethink that whole that whole thing. I don't know what else to tell you, brother, but that's a, that's a that's a great one. I don't think anybody's ever sent me the, a question like that before, and I think I might ask my guest that today. If there's anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, www.ghost-b-gone.biz. If you go there to visit, keep in mind my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work helping people with their paranormal issues. Brothers and sisters, Trust me, I know times are tough, but if you're able to do so and you notice the donate button, click on it and send our small ministry a small donation. I promise you it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts, and trust me, we'll put it to good use. I'm also a certified spiritual advisor, so if you have issues of a spiritual nature not necessarily attached to the paranormal and you'd like to make an appointment to speak with me about those things, there's a place on the website where you can do that. But don't leave the website without navigating over to the page called the WSE course slash book. You'll find the ghost store, cool things to buy in there, if you go for that sort of stuff. And all that stuff goes into the ministry. But scroll down a little bit, you'll run into my new haunted autobiography, God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry. And I quote, scariest book I ever published. That was Annette Munich, owner of Stellium Books, my publisher. But don't let that scare you off of purchasing a copy. If you haven't done your good deed for the day yet, part of the proceeds of every sale of every copy of my book goes to support stjude.org, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada, and the ASPCA. So you get to help some of the most neediest children on the planet and the animals too. How cool is that? You can get the book a little less expensive at Amazon. If you buy it from me and it leaves my office here, you buy it off of the website, that is. I autograph it, and it comes enclosed in a beautiful house blessing kit. And I want to throw one more thing in there because this is happening more and more. And if you have a story to tell, it might end up in my next book. It might end up somewhere else. But um, I want you guys to take a look at something real quick. People that have purchased my book that have left here the house, not so much Amazon, but people that have purchased the book here. Can you make that out, the bottom picture? The child standing at the bottom of the ladder looking up at me? That apparition I caught at a deserted location out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And since my wife and I both saw that apparition, we've seen that apparition here in the home. But some people that have bought my book from me that have left my office here, once the book arrived in their home, they've seen that apparition in their home and they've sent me their stories and have reached out to me. So it's not malevolent. If you purchase my book from me here and you have that issue, please reach out to me and tell me your story. Like I said, your story may end up in my next book or may end up somewhere else. Um, but let me know if that happens to you, okay? And this is a great time to get the first book and get all caught up because God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry 2, Chronicles of an American Exorcist, is ready to come out. It's going to be coming out anytime now. And so it's a good time to get caught up before the second book comes out. And uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Scroll a little further down on that page, and you'll see the Worldwide Society of Exorcists, which I'm a founding member. I offer a 12-week online course, Introduction to Spiritual Warfare, through the WSE. And this is a course for all you true warriors for Christ 
to feel a calling and a longing to want to have more knowledge when it comes to drawing your line in the sand, making a stand, circling the wagons, and putting up a good fight against, God forbid, true evil if it ever comes calling. This is the course for you. No, I'm not going to teach you how to be an exorcist. That's another calling. This is exactly what it says. Introduction to Spiritual Warfare Through My Eyes. And it's a course like, unlike any other course like it that you can enroll in. And I'm taking open enrollment now for the fall classes. And my classes now are limited to a certain number of students. So if you've ever wanted uh, to take a class like that, now's the time. You can enroll on the website. If you'd like to learn more about the course before making that type of commitment, reach out to me. We can talk about it and we can see if it's the course is right for you. Most importantly, please keep all of my former, current, and future students in your prayers. And all my students that take the course and graduate receive a stunning diploma certificate of completion suited for framing along with some other very special blessed gifts that you can only get from yours truly. Okay, the moment of truth, and she is that. She is the truth. I love her. I respect her. I've known her a long time. She's really different in a fantastic kind of way, and I'm so happy that she had an hour out of her busy Friday afternoon uh, to come and hang out with us. She was here. She's been here before, a couple times, maybe more than that. But she's always a big hit. You guys always send me a lot of messages afterwards. When she's going to be back, when she's going to be back, she's here right now. Brothers and sisters, please welcome to the show the one and only Ira Wolfenson. Here I am. <laughs> um, we were almost late for the show because you and I got to <laughs> such a good conversation in the green room before the show got started. If it wasn't for Zach, and thank you for uh, that, Zach, we would... <laughs> Still be talking about Mount Shasta. <laughs> yep. Ira. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I am doing the Catholic things that we all do. Just living my life. And uh, I've never been happier becoming Catholic. It's almost three years now. And um, I jumped right into it um, after two decades of occultism in a very deep way. Um, you know, I came from a Luciferian background and family. No one in my family was Christian. So becoming Catholic at age 60 <laughs> was, um, my friends couldn't believe it. So um, I know you're not being truthful about that. You're not 60. Come on. I'm 63. <laughs> and uh, wait, and wait, my... Uh... Yeah. Well, so am I, and actually, okay. I'm t I turned sixty three today. Today's my oh, birthday. Oh, happy birthday! Um, thank you. And yeah. this is this is my birthday present. I didn't want to tell you beforehand, oh, but having oh, you on the show <laughs> that's so is my amazing. birthday present to myself. Uh, well, what? Jeez. Um, but we're both sixty three. I, I, I'm telling you, you are so beautiful, and you look. I mean, you are number one. You're full of the Holy Spirit. It's the and camera. It just comes <laughs> off of comes off. But you, um. You look, I hate doing this. Why am I doing this? I hate doing I don't know. This. I don't Whatever know. The, number I throw audience, at you. The audience might be wants an to know about demons and things. I know. <laughs> you, real quick, you look like you're 20 years younger than what you just said you were. Oh, Not truth. in real life. You know, it's shocking. <laughs> it's shocking to people when they meet me in real life. You know, they can see that I'm 63. It's just the damn cameras are so favorable and good lighting and all of that stuff. Let me get a couple but, of really casual questions out of the way, and then I'm going to let you just talk about it because everybody wants to know your story, especially yeah. people that tuned in last time and maybe even the time before. They want more of you. But the couple of the casual questions. Okay. Um, I don't even know why I'm asking you this other than because so many Catholics, why this year more so than any other time, but so many mm -hmm. Catholics reached out to me wanting to know if it was okay for them to be so into Halloween. And so I'm throwing that out at you because we just were just Halloween was a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah. And I know you have that occultist background. Yeah. Talk well, to me uh, about that. And what do you, what do you say to that? If somebody comes to you and says, Ira, you know, I'm Catholic too, but I'm really 
passionate <clears throat> about celebrating Halloween and yada, yada, yada. And is that a bad thing? Well, <clears throat> okay. So if you have a problem where you really love covering yourself in fake blood and sticking weird teeth and creating a visual of absolute horror, you might want to rethink that. But I think that it's okay to um, go out with the American version of Halloween. We don't have to get too hard on ourselves. Um, however, it's it's really not an important day to occultists. <laughs> I hate to tell you that, folks, but... <laughs> You know, people think Halloween is, you know, Satan's day and all of that. It, it, that's just a bunch of crap. But um, I think that, you know, you can introduce your children to All Souls Day, All Saints Day, which is a, you know, Christian Catholic observance. And um, you can dress up as other things, you know, dress up as a bunny or a dog or a squirrel or I don't know. You yeah. know what I'm you know what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. I, I just think that <clears throat> when we groom ourselves to be attracted and even as an occultist, I was never attracted to that look, you know, that that dark evil look is not even close to being attractive to me. Um so I think when we groom ourselves to go into that dark, bloody, violent look, um yeah. It's not like the Day of the Dead in Mexico where they do the fancy colors and it's sort of uh, cultural in nature. I mean, I see some pretty horrific Halloween costumes that, you know, little kids probably have nightmares for months after they see those yeah, things. Absolutely. So you kind of have to, you know, discern what is um, appropriate and what's not. Me, personally, any kind of blood-covered, hor horrifying vision is, like, not something that I would want to encounter, just because it's offensive to me, because <laughs> I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, but there are people that are not normal, and they're very attracted to that type of thing. You know, grooming is, um, it's very effective, and people use it. Well, I'm going to throw this out at you, and I wasn't going to ask you this question. I want to throw this out. I'm thinking of a case I worked once, and I only came on the case because a pastor friend of mine begged me to come and help her on this case. I didn't want to. Mm. Like I was still, you know, my wife was dealing with her uh, surviving from her severe demonic attack, and we were going yeah. through a lot of crazy stuff. I had left the field because I came under attack, too. And then because but, you, you know, because you were becoming a priest, it, it, only, <laughs> it really ratchets up when that happens. You know, when I became a big time, just just when I was secretly thinking about it, you know, just spiritual attacks just exploded everywhere. And as an, as an occultist or, you know, with ceremonial magic, I, I didn't have any attacks. I had a charm life because I wasn't something that was going to get away. But the minute I became something that could escape, uh, Boy, I got hit hard. My dogs were sickened. I was sickened. Things went off in my house. Um, financial things happened. Health, financial, family. I mean, you name it across the board. I had birds hitting my window and dying, like not just one or two, like 10, 12 a day. Um, a deer massacre. So when you were starting to um, consider you know, going to God, or even once you've made that decision and you start to live in a state of purity or a state of grace, you get hit so hard. And you have to just keep carpet bombing with the prayers. Actually, I should say this prayer before I start talking about naming names of demons, etc. So I'm just going to say a quick prayer. Okay. So, in nomine Patri, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Pater Noster, quia in celis, sanctificator nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panum nostrum, quotidianium de nobis odie, et dimite nobis, debite nostra, sicut et nos dimitimis, debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos malo, amen, in nomine patri, fili, spiritus sancti, amen. Okay. So, so yeah, so I can imagine that you came under spiritual attack. And I think people all over the world are under a tremendous attack right now because the idea of Christianity has now come out of the closet, so to speak, in such a huge way. We like to see it opposite of that, like, oh, this was a Christian country and blah, blah. 
most of the young people are not Christian. They're pagan, they're Wiccan, they're new age, they're ghost hunter, they're UFOers, they're Bigfooters, they're whatever, vampire fan people. So the Catholic Church forgets that most of the world is not Catholic. <laughs> and so they're trying to bring people into the church by doing the Novus Order, Ordo Mass, which is just bizarre to me. It's <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, and and yet if they were to give the higher functioning old right Tridentine mass that comes with an exorcism and is in Latin and is so beautiful and godly just in the way it appears visually, I think a lot a lot of these pagans, new agers, occultists, blah blah blah, they would actually consider looking at Catholicism. So they're going about it the wrong way. So I don't know where I just I ranted anyway. No, you didn't at all. And, uh, <laughs> two things I'm going to throw at you. First of all, I've got to learn Latin and I've got a big C. I got a, a CD in the oh, living room. Oh, you do. You do because it's much list, more yeah. efficacious. When you say a prayer in Latin, it hurts the demons. This one I want to tell you real quick. Okay. That case, the lady was over the top when we walked in her house. It was like we walked into a Halloween store. That's how she, how much she was into Halloween. And the pastor immediately said, it's this stuff. And I blew it off at the time, but now I've rethought that whole, and that lady ended up disappearing. She was possessed and she ended up disappearing. Oh, yeah. She was a doctor that owned a clinic and she just disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the other thing I want to tell <laughs> you real true? quick is the story you're telling me that you just got done telling me and, and yeah. this, the Tridentine mass and appearing uh, appealing to more of the masses i am inundated with people that remind every time i one of them reaches out to me they remind me of you they are people that had very similar background and now they're saying to me help me i realize now i've made a wrong turn and everything is trying to prevent me from even having this discussion with you. I need mm. help and I want to know how I can either even come back to Christianity in such a way that I'll be, you know, I'll turn things around or Catholicism. And now I'm going to shut up and let you address that because you lived that and you can start yeah. any, with anywhere you want to start with that story. Well, if they were Christian previously, especially if they were Catholic, it, it's a hard road. Um, when you decide to come back, you really need the support of your priest and your godparent or your fellow parishioners or other Catholics, you know, just reach out to other Catholics. Um, start inundating yourself. Go on YouTube or Rumble or whatever your thing of choice is and start listening to the Latin Mass and start praying the rosary every day and start saying the Lord's Prayer. And just taking these steps is like an exorcism in itself. And then when you get back to confession, which is dumping your garbage, cleaning yourself out with a priest, and then you go to Holy Communion, which is filling with the Holy Spirit and Christ himself, you're now you know, in a state of grace that the demons they go where there's the least resistance. They go where there is no holiness. And when you have rejected God or turned your back on God, you would think it would be easier to come back as a Christian or a Catholic. I was never Christian or Catholic. So it, it was, you know, a totally different story for me. But as I understand it, you have to go back to the church if you were Catholic and, and start, you know, checking out, you know, how, how you're going to get your life in order you know, you're no longer committing adultery and you're no longer, you know, doing things that are anti-commandment. So go back to a priest, um, ask for some spiritual counseling from someone like yourself, but surround yourself with what you view, what you listen to. I mean, I had to fight so hard that I couldn't listen to anything but those hokey Christian music channels. I, I didn't care. I just could not listen to things because I was so hypersensitive at that point to evil. And I couldn't watch certain television shows. I prayed the rosary every day, rain or shine, busy, not busy, sometimes three or four times a day for two years straight. 
I would go to mass every Sunday. I always made sure I went to confession. And over time, cumulatively, the demons that have been with me that were so powerful, I'm talking about generational spirits. The demons that had been with me, it was almost like I could feel one by one fall away. And sometimes I would have physical um, results where something that like a skin lesion or something that had been on my body for many years just would just disappear after something for 15 years, you know, I've been trying to find the cure for or what have you. It was the same with my dogs, you know, they were all becoming sick and had these mysterious illnesses. So once I started living in a state of grace. Now, it's not easy to be celibate for most people. For me, it wasn't so difficult because I had been celibate for 15, 20 years anyway. But, um, you know, if you're if you're unmarried, you know, bring your spouse. Why, into you. Like I, I like the old Catholic Church, the United States old Catholic Church. Yeah, you well, can be a woman or a man to be ordained a priest. You can also be married straight or gay. You can be right. married or single. Understood. All those things really. Uh, but you're married when you're not celibate. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> why that choice for you? You, you it's like I, I when I hear that story when a woman any other. And woman, when you look at me, you think, how can this be? Well, well, um, I think I hear nuns tell me that all the time. They get their holy orders I, or they take their vows. I'll tell you why I think it is. I was married five times before I was thirty years old, oh, and wow. I, I was that. a I was a nightmare. I was a nightmare. So I, I got married first time at 17. My father came and got me and had it annulled. But I was a nightmare. I cheated on my husband. <laughs> you know, I had a lot of money. I didn't care. I just wanted to play polo and go, you know, whatever. And because I had no Christian upbringing, I really didn't have Christian values. I really had an occult set of values, Um, you know, this is your life. You got to live it. It's all about the material world. What I think happened for me was God knew ahead of time that I was going to make this transition. I may not have known it, but he took everything out of my life when it came to men. Hmm. I'm not gay. <laughs> I love men. I do. But it was almost like I had things that were coming up and happening and just God just cleared the slate. And it was so funny because my friends would say, don't you miss it? Don't you miss it? Don't you think about it? You know, God took that out of me. And I think it was my penance. Hmm. So I cleared that karma of being so terrible and, and disrespecting the holy sacrament of marriage. Because I was married in the church the last time I was married in the Greek Orthodox Church when I wasn't wow. even Greek Orthodox, but I had to become for a second. So I think it was like I've done my penance. And I think that that's how it works. It's like karma, even for Catholics. You know, God has this really funny structure of, you know, why does evil exist? And, and what is the, why are we here? And all of this stuff, we ask these questions. But if we look at it from, because I had this background in alchemy and hermeticism and, you know, all of that stuff, you look at the triangle with God at the top and God is pure love. God is pure good, but God also has his own free will. That's his unique creation. He, he, he is a being who is all love, but has free will. And what we learn is we cannot have real love without free will. Love wouldn't exist. Would it be love? If you couldn't choose to love someone, would you want creations that loved you simply because you just created them that way. It's a spiritual law. So we have love and we're created all angels, humans, physical, corporeal, non-corporeal. We're created with free will. And at the bottom is justice because free will is such a risk and love comes with this enormous price of a risk to do evil, but you want real love because God is love. Then you have justice at the bottom. And so it's a lot like the system of karma, the way people talk about karma and balance and everything has to be balanced out. And that's why we go to purgatory as Catholics. We have to balance out and, and do the work to balance out our sins. And so that's what I have to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it it the stories I hear from these people, it's uh almost terrifyingly difficult for them to make that move after having been down the no. wrong path for so long. They just need um, to take that first step. And the first step is find a good priest. And I'm sure you know many good priests that are high functioning and holy, that really have the holiness in their hearts. And they're also, you know, when they are doing uh, prayer for exorcism or whatever, they're also much more powerful. You have no desire. You didn't take any of all of the, for, for a time there, you were quite uh, familiar and deeply rooted in shamanic practices. Yeah. I none have of that. And yeah, none of that's, I, none of that really jumps out at me as being bad. No, no but it applies don't... to my Catholicism and my choice. So when you look at my occult education, which was years of ceremonial magic, which has theurgy, which has astroastronomy and alchemy and the Hebrew alphabet and blah, blah, blah. And then I had four years of shamanic studies, which are core, which means global, a whole bunch of stuff put into one bucket. It, it is much like, okay, St. Albert the Great, Albertus Magnus, St. Albert the Great, right? Albert of Cologne. Um, he often would write and allude to alchemy and how that's God's magic. That's, that's how nature was created. And so all those things that I saw in the works of Thomas Aquinas, Augustine, Albert the Great, um, they were all familiar with what I had been taught. And yet they were working under God. They were working with God. They were saints. A lot of people that are in the occult world have no idea. You know, alchemy is God's science. Okay, we know exactly when it came to us. It came to us with the fallen, the 200 fallen led by Azazel. When, when the fallen came down on Mount Hermon and then went into the daughters of men, they brought pharmacaea and they brought metallurgy alchemy and they brought all the occult sciences. We know when that happened, it was stolen. We were never supposed to have it at that time, but they, but it was brought here. And as God always does, he somehow makes an evil deed into something useful and efficacious. He just does that all the time. God will reverse things. And so a lot of the saints and early, you know, high functioning philosophers of the church they were able to look at alchemy not as the stolen magic that comes with a curse, because as we know, everything stolen is cursed, really. You know, do not steal. It's a commandment. Um, they were able to look at it and understand the nature of God himself, you know, his creation, how nature functions. We often see Baphomet with a tattoo of solvent coagula. And I, I hear Christians on YouTube saying, Solve a coagula, you know, it's such a scary, terrible thing, but they don't really know what it is. It's just an operation within nature and God created nature and God created the system and all the operations that creates the cosmos. That's God. So when you see the tattoo of Baphomet wearing that, it's really a mockery of God. And it's a way of saying, well, you can twist this and use it for evil. And we brought it down to you. And it was Genesis 6 of which the angels brought us magic but it was used and given to give people power and control you mentioned angels that jumped. fallen angels <laughs> but but what um, that word is sticking with me here because something else surprised me about you when i was uh you don't have a lot to to stock i go to your website you got a beautiful bio there um but that's not a whole in, lot that's my intent <laughs> I used to. I, I took yeah. it down. I I I I saw uh, the word angelology, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I've ever seen that word hmm. when I went to many times. I've gone to your website to, you know, pick at your bio and try to put together an interview. <laughs> I don't think I've ever it. saw that before. <laughs> so let's talk about that because. Mm -hmm. um, We've got the fallen angels. We have all the other angels. 
Um, I'm going to eventually lead you lead you to Guardian Angels. But okay. <laughs> how did that all happen for you, the angelology? Because I know a lot of people it, into that. Well, in the occult, you work with demons. <laughs> you work with Enochian magic. And, um, you know, demon is a pretty common conversation in the occult magical practices. So the experiences that I've had, uh, God was very clever. You know, I actually came to God by understanding that the existence of evil ones, evil entities are real. And once I went, holy cow, that's, you know, the realm of Christianity. I want to know no more about this. Well, then it got me into the Old Testament of which I met God through the Old Testament. And I literally fell in love with his story, which was really Christ's story pre-incarnation. It's so deep and so fascinating and so mystical and beautiful to me. I can't believe that people don't want to know more about God and Christ and angels and demons and spiritual warfare and, you know, how, how to become holier and, and living. I can't believe people don't want to even hear about it. Except that I understand the reality of demons. Now, when I use the term demons, I'm referring to the dead spirits of the Nephilim. If I'm referring to a fallen angel, I'm going to say fallen angel. But demon is, you know, if you ask an ancient Jew, you know, what's a demon? They're going to say, well, that's the dead spirits of the, of the Nephilim. And the Nephilim were the hybrid children of the fallen angels that came down on Mount Hermon, the 200 of them led by Azazel, who came down and, and went into the daughters of men. In other words, they had children with the daughters of men. It even says in scripture, they married. So they were able to come down and have a marriage with these women. And I think that they brought all the arts and sciences as a way to, here's how you seduce, here's how you tempt, here's how you get power and control. And so, when I talk about the reality of demons, I'm referring to the dead spirits who could not go to heaven because they were not of heaven. They were not created by God. If there's anything God can't stand, it's something that's created that he didn't create. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, he doesn't do hybrids. He just doesn't. And I think that's one of the reasons, you know, the whole flood happened was because the earth was polluted with these half fallen angels and we also know that they took on the characteristics of their fallen fathers so they were very cannibalistic and evil and so now they're spirits they are the demons they love to possess human beings so once i realized that this was happening in the world all around me and i saw the reality of it and i watched people's lives destroyed by that i decided that catholicism had the longest lineage two thousand years of documenting these beings, uh, examining these beings. The philosophers were looking at the nature of evil. They knew the best about how to get it out of your life. And I had a lot of it in my life, my family, my mother, my sister, my brother, true possessions in two of those cases, true possessions. So yeah, How's Catholicism to me now? is the top of the top of the top. If you want to call it, some Christians say, oh, Catholics are very occultist. Well, maybe they are, but in a good divine way, in Absolutely. God's way. How how is how much of your family is still on with us here? Uh, my mother has passed, my father has passed, my brother has passed. My sister is still alive. Um, I care for her monetarily, but I have no contact with her. I just drop a check like I'm the government every month out of, there's no reason why I just had to take the high road and I still know the demon is with her. Wow. I mean, it, it, this, her story is unbelievable. The things she knew, she had the strength of good lord there were five sheriffs and my father trying to hold her down and she was just throwing them off like nothing <laughs> i mean she knew she knew things she had some you know <clears throat> there were some manifestations that occurred that are that are to this day absolutely 
inexplicable to me and horrifying to even contemplate. Her, um, her husband or boyfriend at the time, and I'm talking like 30 years ago, he, um, you know, whatever they were dabbling in ended up claiming after he gouged out his own eyes, claiming that Jesus had manifested and told him to do that. So this is definitely diabolic attack. Um, so I, this Catholic, is the next obvious Catholic. question that I think I've asked you before. And then you, you, I don't, I don't remember what you may have said to me. Uh, when are we going to get a book? <laughs> well, I tried. I actually finished a rough draft of my book. It's called The Devil's Mistake. And uh, the day I finished, my computer exploded. Google uh, Cloud didn't back up. <laughs> it just, it completely disappeared. So I had to pay $1,000 no. and send my hard drive. I, I hadn't been emailing it to myself. I thought, well, I was very comfortable. It was backing up. It wasn't. And so I had to pay $1,000, excuse me. And um, they retrieved it. So I just got it back. It was months of waiting. And now I'm starting to work on it again. And lo and behold, my computer is not saving and I can't um, attach in an email. So I have to go back to the computer people and make sure that, you know, I'm getting things right. But I did finish the first draft of a book <laughs> about my whole experience. But uh, yeah. Even if it gets published after I'm dead and gone, that's fine with me. But it's going to get published. <laughs> no, you're going to you're going to get you're going to get it done, and I I'm definitely going to be right I, there in the front of the I just line know there's so coffee. many people that want to escape from the darkness, and then there's also so many people that don't even know they're in darkness. Yeah, they think they think everything's okay, but really, what's more important is the next phase of our existence in the afterlife in eternity, and. So many people talk about reincarnation and all these other things, and they, they want to make sure that with ghost hunting, this is proof of life after death. I mean, there is not much doubt, doubt in any culture that there is life after death. I mean, you might as well just stop trying to prove it with a measuring stick in a scientific lab. It's just not going to happen. But there is enough proof just from firsthand ancient cultures all the way up to present day that there is an eternity out there and we do have a choice we do have free will you know which eternity do you want to be in i want to go back to my creator Absolutely. you know my my origin my home i don't want to go you know have some weird you know side relationship with oh yeah, I can give you riches and wealth and fame. And then, you know, you'll be in the underworld. Everything will be fine. Everybody you know, know will be down there with you. <laughs> no. What do you say to those <laughs> that have taken the angelology too far? And that's really, that's become a religion for them rather than. Uh, yeah. I think they make it up, you know, like new age stuff. I hate, I hate to be a broad, you know, it's like shamanism, <laughs> you know, core shamanism today is sort of a catch-all using the term shaman from another culture. It, it's sort of, they just make it up as they go along. It was a huge disappointment for me, shamanism. <laughs> it, was, it was, I wished I'd never done it. I but, would have to, I would, I'm going to go out on a limb because I've seen mine. I've met mine. Uh, she saved my life three times in my life. I'm going to go out on the limb and say that you're, you have put your guardian angels, they have been working overtime for many, 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 many years. Have you ever seen, felt, or met your guardian angels? And what's your take on guardian angels? You know, when I was an occultist or when I was growing up, I saw all kinds of things from the unseen realms. As a Catholic... All those things very mysteriously stopped happening. So what were they? What was so horrifying about me becoming Catholic or closer to God that all those pleasant things left? They weren't awful, but they have all the time in the world. So they may not be awful for the first 70 years of your life. But when the time comes, the worm may turn. 
they have plenty of time. They, they're in the Avum. They're outside of time and space. So you might have a wonderful, pleasant, celebrity-filled, you know, wealthy life for the first 70 years. And then the worm will turn because there's always a payment. So, yeah, I used to see a lot of things. And then they stopped. No, I don't talk to Christ, like, sitting in my living room. No, I'm not, you know, having angels appear at, you know, here and there. As a little child, I could say that. But today, it's such a drastic change for me because I'm not seeing anything paranormal. Nothing happens in my house. It's been blessed and exercised. I buried a bunch of blessed and exercised metals from my godmother all the way around the parameter. And it's very cumulative. When you do magic or shamanism, it's like perfume. It it's works at first and then it fades. With the Christian rites and prayers, the Catholic rites and prayers, it's cumulative over time because you're becoming purer and less appealing to the demons. But once it's done, it's you're good for that's it. They don't come back. They're gone. They're not coming back unless you yourself use your free will to say, I'm going to reject this. I'm going to reject God now. I'm going to go back to my old ways. Then you're going to get 10 times more demons coming back at you. I think that's what has saved me over the years. And I've, I've done some pretty bad things was that regardless of how bad things may have gotten, I never turned my back on God. And um, that's that's an, another important factor too, because the invitation is is the is the thing that just does you in. Even if you have just a hair of God burning, the Holy Spirit burning, or Christ inside of you, I think it's enough to keep you from being possessed. And I think a lot of paranormal investigators, I think a lot of them are already possessed. Like I said, demons are like psychopaths. If you want to understand a demon, study psychopathy. If you want to understand a psychopath, study demonology. Demons are, they have that cycle. They're lovely. They're your best friend. They'll be your angel. They'll be your Bigfoot. They'll be your, you know, shining being, your dead relative that you love so much. And then they'll get to a point where they'll start to say, no, now you need to do this. Now you need to say this. Now your message to the world is this. And then when you start to say, this is kind of weird, then they get meaner and awfuler. And pretty soon you are on the ground. Your life has been destroyed. And at the last minute, it'll pick you up. And the whole thing starts over again. So you doubt. Well, if, this, if, this is what I want to talk about now. I've got about <laughs> five minutes left before I've Dang. got. Dang. No, our, our hour, my hour goes by so fast now. Dang. <laughs> um, you have, <laughs> you have had, first of all, how's the dogs? Dogs are, are old. <laughs> so is mine. Um. <laughs> I got one mastiff left, and she's hanging in there. God bless her. But yeah, uh, yeah I and they I'm... go to heaven, and they go to heaven. Because yeah, and I've got spiritual... fourteen outdoor. I'm not a cat person. I don't know how this happened. One day, these all these cats showed up here, and my wife's the office manager at an animal hospital. I'm a vet tech there part time. Uh, what were we going to do? You know, we had them all trapped and taken into a place where we had them all spayed and neutered and given their <laughs> rabies shot and all their shot. But Sharon brought home all of these carriers and took the doors off and put beds and blankets in them and blankets you over the top of them. She put them all around the yard. And so now they just live here. Um, Aww. God bless But you. I'm a dog man. But now all of a sudden I'm just, you know, God's got a sense of humor too. He knows I'm a dog man, so then boom, yeah. now I'm a cat. Yeah. I'm the weird old cat guy in the neighborhood. Yeah. And I used to make fun of the old cat people when I was younger. Now I'm that guy. Yeah. Well, um, hey, we're all getting older. That's how it goes. What I want to ask you real quick is you've lived, and we don't have time for all of this. You've lived mm. in some amazing places. Mm -hmm. The place where you lived when you and I first met was just I always wanted to go there and see it. That's here. Oh, that's there. I thought you moved up. No, you were. I thought you were in the desert. I did. At okay. I, I have bought houses in five different states in the last six years, but I came home to the first that... place you met me in with the rock walls oh, and all you the came archaeology. Back. Oh yeah, my god! I, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm back. 
you said you were looking out your window and you can mm-hmm. see Mount Shasta. Yeah, I can. I'm I, like I said, I'm not into the whole New Age Sedona like stuff. I'm Catholic, <laughs> <laughs> but I I was born and raised in Northern California, so it's nice to come home. You've seen seems you have to have seen some weird things with Mount around Mount Shasta. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have. And I think I do think they're diabolic. I'm sorry. I do. I I think I don't see regular holy angels farting around. I'm sorry for the language. Flying around, you know, tempting people to, you know, go go off on this journey, go off on this rabbit hole. I, I just don't see the holy angels doing that stuff. They're, I have a lot of people. They're way too elegant, you know. But the demons like to mess mess around. You know the funny, <laughs> the funniest thing I get now are calls from people that, if they've known me all my life, I get the calls from them, and if they haven't known me all my life, but they know me as something else, like the, the twenty last twenty years. Well, they know that I've been seeing ghosts all my life, and I've been, you know, a self proclaimed Ghostbuster since I was very young. But they know me as the ghost guy the last twenty years. Let's say. Now that I've taken gone into the seminary, these people come to me and they say, listen, it's just you and I now. We can talk. W- what do but you I, know? Yeah. What, what's going on? Is there something I should know why you've made this move that, you know, what's they going on? They say the on? same thing to me. What is it you <laughs> think you know that I don't? Okay. But Sean, do you pray for the ghosts that you encounter? Because, you know, a lot of exorcists and priests Catholic priests will say these people are asking for prayer. They may not come out and say it, but they just keep appearing and appearing and they're asking for prayers, like say a mass for them when you become a Catholic father or just say prayers for them, you know, uh, de- deprecatory prayers, you know, I in do. Christ's I, well, name. I learned that when I was very young. My mother taught me that. When and she, I, she, and I wonder spirits. if they would go away, some of these ghosts that, you know, like the little boy on the ladder. I mean, my goodness, pray, say prayers, you know, tell the people, say a prayer for him and he'll go away. You know, you know uh, I'm going to, I'm going to lay, otherwise it is laid this on you. Well, I, yeah, I don't know if I've laid this on you before. You know, what f- precedes that apparition is Sharon will see me sitting here right at my, my desk here at my office working and she'll go, she'll go, well, I, I don't want to, he looks busy. I don't want to disturb him. Yeah. You told and me she, this story. And then we see that apparition after that, but I don't get yeah. the spidey senses. Don't go up. Like I know, do when I'm, I know, I know there. You know, the, I, I totally hear what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I'm not being, I don't want to be black and white. I don't want to leave your show with people thinking, <laughs> Oh, it's just angels or demons. There's nothing else. No, the unseen realm is, is like nature itself. There's all levels of consciousness and there's all kinds of beautiful beings that are creations of God. It's the demons that can mimic that and get into that. And they can be anything that you want them to be. And the fallen angels are so intelligent. I mean, you can't even imagine the epic level of intelligence they have. So they can, you know, plan things out 50 years down the road with these types of things. Before I let you go, I never do this. I never do this, but this is the only way you and I communicate or by email or text message. (laughs) Can I can I throw a date at you now? Yes, and of book course. You because yes, everybody's going to want to know when you're coming back. Okay. <laughs> Got a piece of paper and a pen? You just name the day and the time and I'll be there. I'll rearrange okay, well, my schedule cuz you're the only person I do talks with. Friday, I don't, January I don't 6th. Offers anymore. <laughs> Friday, Fri- January 6th. January 6th, Friday, what time? 2 o'clock? 2 p.m. Pacific. Okay, I'll be there. I love you. I respect I love you. you. I you love just... you too. And please, please give my best to your wife yes, and I will. thank her for all the work she does. Really beautiful. Can you imagine being married to me? Uh, and I'm not high maintenance, but she takes I... such good care of me. It's just. I know, but I can imagine you being married to her. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be. If I hadn't met her, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. I was a raging yeah. alcoholic and drug addict when we met. And it, it, she's a minister, too, in the Lutheran faith. Yeah, and yeah. if I hadn't met her, who knows? I wouldn't be here. That's true. So, that's true. Your soulmate, that's the whole thing. You know? You have a phenomenal remainder. You know I pray for you all the time. So you're on oh, my prayer list. Thank I'll you. I'll see you on the 6th. Thank you. Um, give all your dogs a big hug and a kiss for me. I will. Hug and, and a kiss. have a great 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 
happy Thanksgiving, Merry yeah. Christmas, Happy Merry New Christmas. Year, and all that. Happy Advent and Pax to come. Peace be upon your whole audience. Have a great evening. I'll talk to you soon. You too. Bye. God bless you. God bless you. You guys don't have to ask me when she's coming back now. I I planned on doing that so that you guys didn't have to. Friday, January 6th, 2023 at 2 p.m. Pacific, right here. Okay. Um, communitypayitforward.us. Communitypayitforward.us. Go there. Lots of things you can donate to, especially the hurricane relief. United States Old Catholic Church, USOCC.org, has night prayer every night, every weeknight, that is, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Very cool. USOCC.org, Bishop James Long, has Bible study every Wednesday afternoon and Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Pacific. Also very, very cool. The links are on my Facebook page, the USOCC.org, the Bishop James Long website. You can, you'll you find us if you're interested in that stuff. I will be here this coming Monday. Oh, I don't even have to look and tell you who it is this Monday. Whatever it is, say the 18th, the 21st, I guess. That's what it is. You all know where you all over. The last cast member of the project that I worked on that I booked this month is going to be here. Bishop Rita Strugala will be here Monday night. That's going to be a great, great show. Okay. And I think, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I've done this show for seven years. I recently celebrated the seven-year anniversary of this show. But a year ago, Zach and Adrian Clayton took over the producer duties for this show. So I think today is our one-year anniversary of them being my new producers. And I have to say, God bless them both. I love them both. I respect them both. They're both so talented. Um, and I think the last year of this show has been the best ever. So thank you to the both of them. Um, thank you to Things Network. Thank you to Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment. Thank you to Skeleton Key Network. Thank you to PACT, Little P, capital A-C-T, Podcasting for All Coming Together channel, for all these networks simulcasting my show. God bless you all for that. And what else do I want to say to you guys? Oh, I want to say, <laughs> well, before I do that, it's bad joke time. I'm going to pull a joke out of this haunted carnival barker hat that one of you sent in. It's my poor attempt to um, put a smile on your faces before I say good night and have a great weekend. What is the best way to carve wood? Whittle by whittle. Happy 81st birthday yesterday to the one and only Danny DeVito. Good night, Danny. Good night, Jack. Good night, dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. I love you all. God bless you all. You're all on the prayer list. Peace.